I haven't told the testimony for a long time, but it's one from a long, long, long time ago, but it's when I first learned this, so it's precious to me. So to me, it's a highlight clip for my life. It's a marker. I'm praying for a little child that they think could be mentally handicapped for the rest of their life because of a violent seizure nine months old. So you want to hold that baby. You want the possibility of God to come and pray. You're not afraid to hold that baby. You're doing public healing services. You're teaching about the Lord and healing. So you want to hold that baby and pray. The baby has visuals. They're seizures. They're, the baby's shaking like this. And you can tell it's not there. As it's shaking like this, the eyes are going like this. It was very distractive. It was very painful to see. Nine-month-old baby had no idea what it was doing. It was affected by the seizure neurologically. So you take the baby and you pray your best believing prayer that you understand and believe. And it's not long, but you believe it and you pray it. And now you've got the baby and you look and what's the first thing you see? This is real. She comes to church because she's overwhelmed. She's bringing the baby. She's over her head. We're proclaiming Christ. She's thinking, let's bring the baby, maybe Jesus will show up through these people, through the service, through this man, whatever. So I'm in this amazing position to minister Jesus to the baby. So I'm holding the baby. I'm not condemned by this. It's a sobering, humbling, amazing thing. But at some point, this baby isn't changing. At some point, I've got to do what? I've got to either hold the baby till it changes, or at some point, decide it's time to hand the baby back to the lady. Hardest thing you've ever done when you get deceived, when your heart's not in faith, because you're sure you lost. You feel like you're not getting anything. And the hardest thing on the planet is being sincere and seeing things like this in your life. And all of a sudden, this baby's not changing, and I have to hand it back to the arms of the lady. This is real. And as soon as the baby is being handed back, her eyes fill with tears. Why? Because she's saying, oh, well, I might as well resolve the fact that I brought the baby in hope. It just didn't happen. But, oh, well. But I was hoping. But, oh, well. Tears. Now your eyes fill with tears. Because you know that you know. You believe that you know that you know. That deep down in your heart, you know that he's God. And he could just go, and then you don't go, well, then how come? Then why? Then what? She's leaving. I'm standing there holding the back of a chair in the front aisle. I remember kicking my toe hard on the carpet because I was full of emotion. I got 10 more people to pray for, and I just want to go in a corner and cry. Why? Because when she don't stop shaking, I'm believing she ain't healed and we didn't get it. And when that lady goes out that door, I'm believing we lost. And I'm frustrated, I'm hurt, I'm upset, I want to cry. Holy Spirit, because I'm sincere, I believe, and I ask him to father me all the time. That's one of the reasons I believe he intervenes and, <laughs> and keeps me from making bad mistakes every once in a while because I ask him to father me all the time. He said, hey, don't be so deceived. I said, huh? He said, why aren't you counting it a privilege, an honor and a privilege that you touch that baby in Jesus' name? Dan, you're looking with your eyes and thinking with your mind, why are you so deceived? He's saying, why did you change what you believe? Because you didn't see her change. And I'm going, duh, I preach this stuff. I preach this stuff. But I got so emotional and caught up with the nine month, the visual, the seizure. Oh, it wrenched me that I was deceived. And the Holy Spirit said, why are you so deceived? He said, count it a privilege. You touched the baby in Jesus' name. Well, that's amazing. Wow, that counted a privilege. That means you're moving. Heaven's engaged. We release the kingdom. Duh. What am I doing? Watch. Don't get offended when I do this. The lady's overwhelmed. She brought her to us hoping she would receive from Jesus through us. 
I preach the word, represent the word, pray for the baby, but when I look with my eyes and think with my mind, this is what I do with the word. And say, well, we didn't get it. Maybe next time, oh well, didn't work. Now, don't be mad that I threw my Bible over there, okay? Don't anybody get religious on me in this room. God's not bruised. He's not limping. He doesn't have a headache, I promise. And I didn't dishonor him. I'm just using that as an illustration. We tossed the word away. So Holy Spirit said, so I got immediately restored back to me. I went, duh. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, we touched the baby. Jesus' name. So I had two ladies working with me because I was starting to try to train and equip, multiply, get people involved. I had two ladies, precious ladies, that just love Jesus. You mentioned his name. They're, oh, Jesus. they're holding the baby praying, and they're feeling just like me. But at some point, we gave the baby back to mom. Well, it was actually a neighbor. It wasn't even the mom. The mom had no faith to come anyway, and the neighbor said, can I please take the baby? That was Wednesday night, Friday morning, late towards noon. I got a phone call. It's the lady. Because I got the girls together. I said, listen, I was feeling like, and, I was, and they're like, I said, no, no, listen. Holy Spirit asked why I'm so deceived. Why in I counting an honor and privilege to touch the baby in Jesus' name? We held the baby in Jesus' name. We released the kingdom. Lay hands on the sick. They recovered. Duh. We got caught up in the moment. Sentimental. We got caught up in the moment. Little baby. Yeah. Yeah. I said, listen, God is on this thing. He's moving. He can change that baby. Come on. We released the kingdom. We got to believe that. And it was like a football huddle and a new play. We're going to score. Rah! We couldn't wait to line up on the ball. We go to bed. Live all Thursday, go to bed, Friday late morning. I get a phone call, it's the lady. Dan, I have something amazing to share with you. The mother walked by the crib and the baby was cooing and making baby noises, hasn't made a sound since the seizure. She walked in the room and she's holding one of her crib toys, cooing and talking to it with awareness. <laughs> She scooped her up and ran her to John Hopkins. They ran every test, totally negative, every test, and totally normal. Come on. The last time I talked to the lady and was aware of the child, it, the baby was in fourth grade. Come on. I'm not in touch now, but in fourth grade with no effects of that season, completely a normal fourth grade child. Come on. When they walked out of the church, she was the same. Holy Spirit said, why are you so deceived? Why are you looking with your eyes and thinking with your mind? Uh, Counting an honor and privilege, you touch the baby in Jesus' name. Uh, That's a pretty amazing testimony. Marked my heart and taught me what faith is. Seeing isn't believing. Seeing is believing. Did you get it? When Jesus' disciples couldn't heal the epileptic boy and he called him a perverse generation, a twisted-minded, corrupted thinking people said, bring the boy to me. How long shall I bear with you? How long shall I be with you? He's not mad. He's saying, look, guys, I'm telling you, I'm about to go, be turned over to Pilate and be crucified. I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father. I'm about to hand you the baton of the New Covenant, New Testament church. You got to get this. Yeah. Bring the boy to me. Your minds are spinning. You're corrupted in your thinking. Violent seizure, visual. You pray, he doesn't change. Why isn't he changing? Why isn't he healed yet? If Jesus was here, he'd be healed by now. Wonder what we're doing wrong. He instantly heals the boy. They come privately in verse 19. Teacher, why couldn't we heal the boy? Pretty direct question in a question and answer session. Jesus doesn't give the long answers that I give. He says, because of your unbelief. He didn't say, because you ain't got no faith. He said, because of your unbelief. Guess what it translates to be? Guess what it means? Because of what you fail to see. Then he turns around and says, but truly I tell you this, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to the mountain, move and it'll move, and nothing shall be impossible for you. What's he saying? It's because of what you fail to see, but truly I tell you this, if you see what I see, you'll do what I do, and nothing will be impossible for you. 
Now you show me a limitation to what Jesus said, except that we fail to believe it and grow up into it even when we don't see the fruit. It's the only limitation, is that we throw away what he said and try to reevaluate what he said compared to the lack of fruit or somebody dies or doesn't get healed. So why don't we continue in the knowledge of the Son of God and grow up into him in all things to the full measure of the stature of Christ instead of spiritually analogizing a way to make our troubled hearts feel comforted in a false way. Let's just go after this thing. Because I question, see I threw my Bible over there, remember? I question what would have happened to that little girl. This isn't condemnation, it's sober. If I wouldn't have heard Holy Spirit say, why are you so deceived? I wonder if I'd have never heard the voice of Holy Spirit and just left my Bible thrown and just believed, oh well, we failed and didn't get the answer and oh well, God didn't heal her. I wonder what her state would be. Because here's what we say, well, God will heal her if he wants. And I think we forget that he moves through people. That he gave the earth to the children of men and he set it up that way for his kingdom to flow through his children. Don't say if God wants you to have it, he'd give it to you. He says you have not because you ask not. So if you don't speak life, you don't get life. If you speak death, you get death. But God's will in life. And it's not mix this thing up and twist up sovereignty. Let's take the privilege of stewarding the earth and let's walk in truth and live by the Spirit not fight over it. If men are reaping what they're sowing, then not everything that's happening is orchestrated by the Lord. If we're destroyed by the lack of knowledge, then it has nothing to do with the choice of God. So if you get the knowledge, we can stop destruction. Yeah? Okay, I'm done. <laughs>